Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Star Wars, Age of Republic, Count Dooku. Uh, got some things to say about this comic book. Let's go there. All right, first off, we got The Cost. That's the name of this individual issue. Jody Hauser is the writer. Luke Ross is on art. Uh, Java Tartaglia is on colors. VCs Travis Lanham on letters. Paolo Rivera on colors. Uh, excuse me, on the cover. <laughs> and uh, Mike McCone and Guru FX on variant cover. And Dermont Power on concept design variant cover artists. All right, and Anthony Gambino, the production designer. So check this out, man. Um, Count Dooku, uh, Count Dooku is visiting the home world of the Celestarians. That's the, uh, the dude that was riding co-pilot with Lando Calrissian when he was in the, the, um, the Millennium Falcon and Return of the Jedi. You know, remember that little co-pilot thing that he had? He was like, <laughs> that's like the only thing that he said the entire time. Yeah, that guy. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, this is that guy's home planet. And of course, back in the age of Republic. You know, he shows up on this plan, this dude who's just like an absolute toady. This Celestarian who's an absolute toady just comes up. He's like, oh, yes, uh, uh, I really want to. You know, I'm so glad that you came here because, like, you know, you're cool and stuff. And I want to do some trading with you. And I'm going to cheat you and stuff like that. Uh, oh, no, did I say that out loud? Oops. And, like, it's like that kind of a guy. He's just, he's an absolute freaking toady. It's annoying. So, um, Duke shows up, shows up and he's already annoyed by this guy. And uh, he's doing this little tour before they actually get to the dinner where the trade negotiation is actually supposed to happen. And there's this tiger-headed dude, like uh, back in the day, Tiger Mask. No, it's a tiger-headed Jedi. And he's there, and he's a, he's a Jedi Knight, not a master. But he sees Count Dooku, he's like, oh my god, I remember seeing you when I was like a little kid. I'm like, you were awesome. And like, you know, you, you, you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, with Yoda with a lightsaber. I'm like, you know, okay, that's not quite how he talks. It's probably a little bit of growling. But um, <laughs> he's like, oh my god, you were just awesome. Uh, I, I, I even met Qui-Gon Jinn a couple times. And um, um, anyway, they, they wind up trying to get to know each other a little bit better. Mind you, you could, it's clear, it's evident from the beginning that Dooku is totally in charge of this, all right? Now, Dooku's here for multiple reasons. One is because, yes, he's supposed to be the face of the, the Trade Federation, not the Trade Federation, but, you know, everything. <laughs> everything um, uh, momentary uh, uh, mental block. I can't remember what the bad guys were necessarily called. The, yes, it was technically the Trade Federation in... in um, Revenge, of, no, and um, whatever, the first prequel, um, but in Attack of the Clones and on, uh, they, they called it a much larger thing. Anyway, those guys, <laughs> they had all the droids. They had, um, um, they had these negotiations, and of course, he's got to try and keep his mission secret. This Jedi Knight is supposed to keep his mission secret, too. But they're both there for essentially one of the same reasons. They're trying to find this underground organization, this black market that exists on uh, uh, Celeste, Celeste, I think it's called, and, uh, you know, th this home planet. They're trying to make contact with them. Well, Dooku is manipulative from the very get, and this is just one of the things that really makes this comic amazing. More than that, it's one of the things that makes me like what I didn't like about the, uh, the prequels. One of the things I do, I get, I get some crap sometimes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For the most part, when somebody says, oh, how come you don't like the prequels? Well, it's not that I didn't necessarily like the prequels, but I didn't like the first one because Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> it was just a bit too much. I, I got nothing against Ahmed Bast, the guy who plays him. God bless him. You know what I'm saying? May he make all the money in the world. But, like, he got to be a Star Wars character. <laughs> I did. Um, but he... Um, uh, what do you call it? with 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 the the prequels? Like you don't get a whole lot of information about these characters, you know. Uh, Boba Fett was a, was was fire in a bottle, all right. Some way, somehow, and and I think most of us know why. If you're a Boba Fett fan, because the toy came out, and it's just the perfect time, and all the the anticipation because of the freaking Christmas special that was terrible, and all these you know crazy things that happened that were very lucky that all of a sudden we got Boba Fett, and even though he didn't do a whole lot in those other two movies. It was just, it was like, oh, this is awesome. This guy's so cool. He would kill everybody in the room. Um, and then when they threw him into, you know, the, the first Star Wars movie, 
uh, much later on is like, oh my God, he's technically in all the movies now. He's the greatest, you know, like that. Um, he didn't really earn that, right? He's like, he's the guy who talked back to Darth Vader and he had the toy that could shoot a missile, which I don't remember ever having seen that before. I never remember having seen that before when I was a kid. This thing shot a missile. <laughs> um, they, they try to do the same thing in the prequels. Darth Maul. Awesome. Let's be realistic. When, when most of the time, most of us, when we saw Count Dooku show up and it's like, they just had this awesome looking dude who could kick butt and he had a double blade lightsaber and they're going to switch him up with this. Hold on now. This jabroni. All right. Here comes this freaking mighty jabron who comes up with a, with a, a looks like a limp dick uh, lightsaber. I would just call it like I see it. I'll call it like I see it. All right. Here's this guy. He's just, he's, he's like, what are you doing? You got a little lightsaber that leans forward a little bit. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> And like, this guy's supposed to be cool. This guy's supposed to be tough. And he's just like, you know, he seems to be just so typical freaking Christopher Lee over the top. You know, I can see that we're going to have to solve this battle with our light sabers. It's like, dude, calm down. All right. You're not Darth Maul. <laughs> You're just not. All right. Darth Maul was awesome. We should have been able to keep Darth Maul a whole lot longer. Or at least show us freaking Count Dooku first. And then give us Darth Maul because he was awesome. No, instead, it's like, he's literally Darth Maul and then here's this guy, all right? And that's to say nothing about Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee is freaking awesome. I think this is known. This is an established fact. That being said, <laughs> you know what I'm he just, he did not live up to the hype that was Darth Maul. He simply didn't. The, the um, you know, Jango Fett was an awesome character who showed up. Freaking all these characters were a bunch of, you know, really cool characters who showed up. And it was like, then they just died quickly and, and pointlessly. All the, the hype that they gave us for Attack of the Clones. And then he just, Christopher Lee just dies. You know, Count Dooku just dies abruptly in the beginning of the next movie. Uh, you know, Revenge of the Sith. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, it's, it's, it's it, like, it's, it's mind numbing that they, uh, they didn't try to preserve the bad guys a little bit and really make us hate them. Grievous too. It's like, you just show up and all of a sudden we're supposed to be like, yeah, great. This guy's going to die. Everybody knew he was going to die. Um, I don't know, man. There, there, there were, there were shortcomings. There were failings. Now, if this kind of level of manipulation was shown on the part of Count Dooku, all right, if we had some prequel, action happened in between the movies, all right? If we had, like, like a, I don't know, a single season, some, some way, somehow, of um, a couple of Star Wars, you know, shorts that, that gave us something like this, I think that we'd have a lot more anticipation of this character. You see, like, you, you channel Christopher Lee, what he's really good at, his talking ability, his ability to just, you know... Uh, yes, um, I, um, uh, you, you do know that, or you do know my, um, my former apprentice, Qui-Gon Jinn, you know that he died, right? He was, he was killed surprisingly. And, and he wasn't even there on this planet alone. He was there with his Padawan. But I wonder, would he have died if his master was there? And the other Jedi Knight is like, you know, oh, oh, uh, yeah, no, I, you can't blame yourself like that. What's this guy doing? Count Dooku, this character with a really dumb name, it sounds like Dookie, all right? He's literally, he's one, one vowel, one vowel switch away from being Count Dookie, all right? He's there and he's eliciting emotion out of a Jedi Knight who's supposed to know better and to succumb to emotion. But he uses his name and he manipulates this guy into feeling sorry for him. So he reveals his top secret mission. He takes him on his top secret mission. He lowers his guard for a top secret mission. Everything that happened in this book just succinctly worked and made you understand what a painfully manipulated silver tongue son of a gun that Count Dooku was supposed to show himself to be in the prequels. And I just don't think we really got. The most we got was... Oh, I'm so sorry you're here, Master Kenobi. Uh, this is terrible. I, I, I'll arrange to have you released at once. Oh, you're not going to give me the information I want? 
oh, you know, it might uh, might get caught up in, 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 in problems, you know, with negotiations trying to get you out of here. I can't tell how long you'll be here for. Sorry, bud. Like, it's... You know, the, the one time that he's trying to do his silver tongue, it's up against Obi-Wan, who just ain't broken that crap. Here, you get to see him being a seriously manipulative son of a gun. And I loved it. It just worked so damn well. Almost worked too damn well. It's like, it's like this book, now that it's, you know, this is canon. <laughs> this book makes me care for the character a lot more. Again, that's nothing to say about the amazing actor that is and was, God rest his soul, uh, Christopher Lee. Dude was amazing. There was no Hammer films without this guy. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he really made that second Lord of the Rings movie. Just, I don't even know where else to go with this. Dude was awesome, all right? But <laughs> I wish that the Star Wars prequels would have had story building like this. This, or character development, I should say. Not story built. The story was amazing. Um, but character development like this, specifically for the bad guys. Damn, this was good. I'm really hoping that after uh, Miss Hauser does the, um, uh, the was it, TIE Fighter Squad, TIE Squadron, Shadow Squadron, I think it's called. I really hope she, if she, she's finished with that, she's going to be doing her own book back in the, the Age of Republic. And just let's get, if they can get stories out, whatever she can, just whatever. Just be like, here you go, Miss Hauser. Here's the, you know what? You know what? Donny Cates going and says 1.0. Anything that's uh, cosmic has to run through me now at Marvel. That's that's really cool, man. You go. You the man. Can we make it so that anything Age of Republic that go, or even anything that's Star Wars has to go through Miss Jody Hauser? Is that a possibility? Because you have my vote. And I honestly don't know which artist to take. Hell, as far as I'm concerned, have her write all the Star Wars books. <laughs> and just give her all the artists. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if, if, if by now it's not been shown that she can handle Star Wars and that she deserves the best artist, the best, you know, everything, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what else Marvel needs to see at this point. Seriously, I am madly in love with everything that's being put out right now. Age of Republic style. And, and, after we just talked about the subtle manipulations and whatnot, and we know that after the the, the Padme book and the General Grievous book um, that are coming out, and we're going to get uh, Princess Leia immediately after that, guess what comes after that? Grand Admiral Tarkin. Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't wait to see where that goes. Just don't, all Star Wars books should go through Miss Jody Hauser. Done. Done. Guys, I'm out. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.